So please welcome Slava, who will talk about researching the UNICEF baseband. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for attending the talk. Um, I'm Slava. Uh, I have been doing mobile security research at Checkpoint for the past six years. Yeah, reverse engineering and vulnerability research is my daily work. Yeah. Uh, while working as a mobile researcher, I, I have been tested uh, various firmware provided by mobile chip manufacturers uh, many times. Uh, I have worked with some success on Qualcomm's, Trazon, Baseband, DSP decoders, as well as MediaTek, uh, DSP decoders, Baseband, and, uh, and so on. So I can safely say that at the moment, uh, the proprietary code of the major mobile chip manufacturers uh, has been studied well uh, by enthusiasts like you and me. And, uh, but uh, there are chip makers that security researchers uh, have, uh, have not yet taken an interest in. For example, uh, have you ever heard about Unisoc company or vulnerabilities uh, in their products? Uh, actually, uh, th there is no much information of this kind uh, on the public domain. Uh, you could not even find an email address to, to report a new vulnerability. Uh, the only way is to uh, submit is to be invited by Google to their private program on HackerOne platform. So, uh, so uh, in this study, I, uh, I chose the uh, Unisoc baseband as the research target, and I will show you that it did not uh, take long to reverse engineer and find a security issue. Um, many push button phones. Uh, which we used uh, 15 years ago, uh, were based on uh, a chip uh, from Spreadroom. A Chinese chip manufacturer uh, founded in uh, 2001. Uh, in those days, uh, the manufacturer uh, was very popular. Uh, thus, in uh, 2011, uh, more than half of all Chinese phones uh, were based on chips from Spreadroom. Uh, later, in 2018, uh, there was a rebranding and Spreadroom uh, became known as Unisoc. Uh, nowadays, uh, the chip manufacturer produces uh, budget chips uh, uh, which power two, four, three, 5G devices ranging from uh, smartphones to, to smart TVs. And uh, by, the end of, uh, by the end of 2021, uh, um, about 10 or even 11 percent of all smartphones in the world are based on Unisoc chipsets. Here you can see that Unisoc is the fourth uh, largest mobile chip manufacturer after MediaTek, Qualcomm, and Apple. And uh, in uh, 2021, uh, Unisoc sales increased uh, quarter by quarter, so it's very promising. Uh, the world is already accustomed to seeing a special set of, uh, of uh, set of custom processors uh, on a mobile SOC. Uh, in this, Unisoc is not much different from other uh, manufacturers. Uh, for example, the Tiger T700 SOC, which is one of the newest Unisoc products, uh, contains eight CPU cores where Android run. And uh, contains the graphic processor unit, image signal processor, neural processor unit, at, and of course, a radio modem uh, we are talking about. Yeah. Um, so uh, now you know what is the subject of this research. Uh, the next question is uh, what are we looking for? Uh, the realities of today's world show that the main customer and user of the remote attacks on the smartphones are regular military units and not individual hackers, uh, as many think, uh, at least for the reason that zero-day exploits of this kind uh, are very expensive. Of course, uh, cyber armies are interested in uh, a targeted attacks on a specific person for purpose of uh, wiretapping. 
but uh, such an attack is less relevant uh, for, for our research uh, because Unisoc chips uh, are primarily equipped with uh, budget phones, and I don't think that many important uh, people uh, use these smartphones today. But another used case uh, for, uh, for modern vulnerabilities is to neutralize communication with, uh, within the range of the portable BTS. Uh, attacks of this kind are simple, stable, and uh, kept in service by armies. And uh, actually, uh, we need only one zero-day denial service uh, vulnerability in uh, the modem of each manufacturer to achieve a radio silence. And so this research, uh, I, I try to find an issue in Unisoc modem, uh, which make it possible to reboot it er remotely. Um, yeah. So uh, LTE network uh, consists of dozens of protocols and components, and uh, you can easily find a, a detailed description of uh, the LTE standard on the internet. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at uh, some basic concepts and to understand the Unisoc modem side. Uh, the, the three GPP telecommunication standard group uh, introduces the concept of the involved packet system, uh, EPS. Uh, this is a high-level architecture of uh, uh, LTE technology. Uh, such architecture uh, contains uh, three key components, uh, which is the user equipment, UE, and involved radio access network, EU train, and involved packet core. So, uh, which are interconnected to each other. Uh, in, our, in, in our case, uh, user equipment is the Unisoc modem. Okay. Uh, the EU train component contains only one protocol stack. Uh, this is the E node B radio station, uh, which controls radio communication between the user equipment and the EPC component. And the MPC core uh, is made of, of, uh, of four protocol stacks, uh, one of which is the uh, mobility uh, management entity, uh, MME, and uh, which controls the high-level operations uh, of the uh, mobile device in the LTE network. And in this research, we focus on messaging between the user equipment uh, and uh, MME uh, stack. So on this slide, you can see uh, the mo mobile protocol stack uh, in details, and uh, the non-access stratum, aka NAS, this is the high, uh, highest level uh, of the user equipment, and, uh, so, and uh, NAS messages are transmitted from the user equipment to MME uh, and vice versa uh, without changes. So it was advisable uh, to choose the NAS level for further analysis uh, because it's operated with easy to understand high level structures. Uh, the NAS level hosts two protocols, uh, one of which is the mobility management, EMM, and the second is the uh, session management, ESM. So uh, these protocols uh, are responsible for sec security control, tracking carrier management, uh, mobility between different uh, three GPP networks, uh, EPS bearer management, and, uh, and, uh, and so on. Uh, to get an idea of NAS messages, uh, let's take a look at the procedure of joining a device uh, uh, to an uh, LTE network. Uh, it covers most uh, common EMM um, messages. Uh, on the slide, you can see a snippet of the NAS traffic uh, when a device uh, attaches to the LTE network. Uh, here we can determine the direction by IP address. Uh, on this slide, you can see a scheme which corresponds to the uh, flow shown uh, on the previous slide. I will not go into details, uh, but uh, now it's clear that uh, that Unisoc modem uh, must support, uh, I mean, provide handlers for uh, uh, dozens NAS messages uh, to be able to connect to the LTE network. And uh, these NAS handlers, uh, what we want to analyze for errors, uh, as you understand, when a new NAS message uh, arrived, uh, the Unisoc modem parses it and creates internal object based on the uh, received data, and the bug in the parsing code uh, could be used to uh, crash the modem remotely. 
Okay, uh, but uh, before exploring uh, the uh, NAS handlers uh, implement, implemented in the Unisoc modem, uh, it would be right to uh, to take a look uh, to take a look at such handlers in an open source LTE project uh, such as SRS Run. Uh, the user equipment stack uh, has not changed for a long time, and uh, all its implementations are very similar to each other. Uh, so, uh, besides uh, uh, the SRS run project uh, contains uh, some handlers uh, which were found to be vulnerable. Uh, according to the, to the GitHub starts rate, uh, the uh, SRS run is the most popular open source implementation of uh, the uh, EPS components, including the user equipment stack we're talking about. And uh, you can find the NAS handlers in the NAS point uh, module. Okay, on this slide you can see um, at, uh, ex an example of the attach accept NAS message. Uh, it, um, uh, it has a list of tracking identifiers, GPS timers, and uh, a dozen of optional components like uh, mobile identity, emergency number list, and so on. So uh, a large amount of miscellaneous information must be deserialized. And uh, the LibLTE MME model from the SRS run uh, contains, uh, contains separate parse, uh, parsing function uh, uh, for each content type. Uh, as we will see further, uh, the Unisoc modem uh, has a similar functions. Uh, in addition, I marked two, uh, uh, two fields, uh, handlers of which contain vulnerabilities. Uh, we'll just take it one uh, of them as an example. Uh, for example, LibLTE MME unpack emergency number uh, list IE function extracts emergency numbers from the NAS messages, uh, and the maximum length of, uh, of the uh, NAS uh, of the emergency list uh, is 12. Uh, but the check that the submitted number uh, of emergency numbers uh, uh, does not e exceed the 12 is, is emitted. It means that MME server uh, can send uh, a message large enough to, uh, uh, to cause more than 12 uh, cycles of the while loop and, uh, and uh, thus uh, overwrite emerge num array with uh, arbitrary values. And uh, this issue leads to stack overflow. Okay, now we, uh, we know what is the uh, NAS parsing functions are, and we also have a code for references. Uh, next, we're going to, uh, uh, to find NAS parsing functions in the Unisoc modem firmware. Uh, in this research, I used Motorola Moto G20 uh, smartphone as a test device, and uh, this device is based on the uh, Unisoc T700 SOC. And uh, Moto G20 f f f factory update uh, can be downloaded from the internet, uh, which saves us the trouble of rooting the device. And uh, in, in, in the update file, the modem image is represented uh, by the file uh, marked on the slide with this long name. Um, yeah. So uh, the modem image uh, has a proprietary structure, but it can be easily uh, reconstructed. Uh, the image starts with the magic, uh, uh, full of it by, uh, by uh, block headers. And uh, the structure of these block headers is shown on the slide, where the offset is the offsetting bytes of the block, uh, uh, offsetting bytes of the block in the image file, and the length is the size of the block. So modem image uh, of my test uh, motor. 20 uh, device contains only two blocks. Uh, the first block is of type uh, 402, which presumably means debugging libraries. And uh, the second block is of type 301, which is uh, uh, modern binary. Yeah. So we can easily cut both, uh, both blocks from the image file. Uh, the debugging library block uh, is a 7 zip archive uh, which contains libraries uh, to parse and, and trace uh, network messaging from an external machine. And for example, LTE PSR message DLA library, which is compiled for x86 uh, architecture, um, uh, contains function, uh, functions uh, to, uh, to parse NAS messages. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it, it, uh, remain unclear to me why, uh, why Unisoc carriers uh, all these libraries as part of a uh, modem image. Uh, they cannot be run on uh, Android uh, or on smartphone processors. 
As, as you can see, LibLT error message DLA library uh, exports about, about 100 uh, functions uh, for parsing various parts of NAS messages. And what is more interesting and available thing is that this library is a duplication of the modem code. Besides, it contains the same vulnerabilities. In general, it means that we can research this library and, to, and uh, not to waste time uh, to, uh, for, uh, for modem assembly and, uh, and, and so on. Okay. Uh, note that, uh, that uh, um, most, almost all uh, the decoding functions uh, have the same format and uh, the uh, NAS message blob and, uh, and uh, an output buffer are the arguments. Okay, now let's talk about the uh, second block of, of the modem image. Uh, this is a modem binary block, okay. It, it has a proprietary format, uh, uh, but uh, uh, on my test device, the, uh, the, uh, the header uh, of the file uh, has, uh, has uh, 600 bytes. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, in general, no need to dig into the header fields because right after the header, uh, the modem code, uh, I mean ARM, instructions begin yeah so and uh, the uh, base address of the code segment uh, provided in, in in the header uh, also to to make life easy for us uh, so okay uh, the, the arm in, uh, I've wrapped uh, uh, arm instructions uh, with a, a elf header and uh, specifying uh, 8B00600 as the base address of the code segment. In addition, I have added, uh, added an empty data block, and the resulting binary can be easily decompiled, and uh, on, on the slide you can see what IDA navigation bar looks like. And uh, the code uh, is not compressed, unlike uh, Qualcomm modem, and uh, uh, there are many strings uh, to simplify our work at times. Uh, so, lock messages uh, implemented in the modem binary uh, uh, contains uh, contain a static name of uh, of the source module, and uh, this gives us the, the ability to quickly find NAS parsing functions and. Uh, the, all the NAS related module names uh, starts with the LNAS error message uh, substring. And for example, LNAS error message EMM ATT ACC module is responsible for attach accept EMM message. Okay. Uh, the model name is, is not the only option. Uh, actually, for example, uh, we can look for uh, attach accept word uh, to find the desired code. So self-described string name, uh, strings uh, s uh, permeate uh, all the code, yeah. Uh, I want to know that, um, that uh, the modern binary, uh, there are no symbols in the modern binary. And it means that all, uh, all names of functions and variables you see on the slides, this is a result of the renaming based on the SRS uh, run uh, open source project. And uh, the so, uh, as I have assumed, the SRS run code and Unisoc modem code are very similar, and uh, SRS run uh, sources uh, help us uh, to easily explore uh, the modem assembly. For example, on the slide you can see uh, a code for, for parsing of uh, attach accept message. And if you look at the code, you will see that eight bits of the message uh, are interpro uh, interpreted as, uh, as uh, sub-message type. And if this type is equal to 23, uh, and information about a mobile identity flows. Um, yeah. So jumping into, we see the code to fetch uh, mobile identity lengths and mobile identity types, and uh, we will talk about details a bit later. So now we have everything we need uh, to scan the code for vulnerabilities. And uh, of course, we, we, uh, we don't work manually uh, since we deal with the ARM code. And, uh, okay, uh, the vast majority of the uh, NAS parsing functions 
uh, have the same format uh, and uh, have three arguments. Uh, the first argument in, is, uh, is an output buffer, which is an object uh, of uh, uh, appropriate message structure. And uh, the second argument in the NAS message data blob to decode. And the last is the offset in, uh, in the message blob. So the unified function format uh, allows us to uh, to easily uh, implement RNAS uh, to fast uh, NAS parsing functions, and uh, um, and we can perm permeate uh, NAS data blob and then the uh, call uh, the call NAS parsing functions directly, providing uh, the message blob as a second argument uh, to run. Uh, NAS parsing functions and NAS handler on an emulator like uh, QMU user mode. Uh, we also need to do some patches. For example, we need to uh, uh, redirect uh, malloc calls to the libc e equivalent. In this research, I use the classic combination of American fuzzy loop and QMU emulator, and, um, and so uh, to fuzz the modem uh, NAS handlers and uh, parsing functions uh, on an Ubuntu machine. Uh, similarly, we can fast uh, LTPSR message delay library on Windows. Uh, there, we, we are dealing with same functions, same arguments, and uh, no need for patches. Uh, as a result, uh, I found several out-of-bound uh, read vulnerabilities when, uh, Uniso uh, when uh, NAS handler uh, reads data outside of the uh, NAS message blob. Uh, but I'm going to show you only write vulnerability uh, in the function uh, of uh, mobile identity parsing. Uh, so, um, EMM message, uh, 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 e MME server uh, can uh, may send an optional field. Uh, field uh, this is mobile identity as uh, as a part of multiple NAS messages, and um, and Unisoc modem um, uh, uses a function like uh, libpt MME unpack mobile ID uh, uh, IE uh, from the SRS run project to extract the the uh, NAS message uh, extract mobile identity from the NAS message. And uh, the smartphone modem uh, supports uh, several uh, uh, types of IDs, and uh, one of which is the IMSI number, which uniquely identifies the mobile user in the cellular network. Uh, okay, in this slide you can see just an example of a um, uh, malformed uh, attach accept message and uh, uh, which cause overflow. Uh, the highlighted 23 value indicates that the data blob, uh, that the following data blob uh, is, an, uh, is a, a mobile identity data. And uh, uh, identity length uh, is one byte and uh, identity type is IMSI. A separate uh, parse uh, IMSI functions will be called to, uh, to extract the IMSI number from the NAS message, and the identity length, in our case it's uh, one byte, uh, will be passed uh, as a, a fourth argument. On this slide you can see uh, parse IMSI functions, and the, the logic is to, is to uh, copy uh, identity length minus two bytes uh, from the message to an output buffer as an IMSI number, uh, uh, but the check that the uh, provided identity length is uh, greater than one is omitted. So uh, the, if uh, 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 IMSI number specified in the NAS message by uh, MME server uh, or attacker, uh, and, uh, uh, is zero or one, then minus two bytes will be copied uh, from the message to the heap memory, which leads to overflow. Yeah. So uh, if an uh, MME server or attacker uh, sends such uh, M a message, then a model will, uh, modem will reboot and the game is over. Uh, to summarize, so you see that uh, that it, it was not difficult to to uh, to deal with the Unisoc modern firmware, and I think that uh, uh, we we will soon see a large amount of uh, 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 disclosed vulnerabilities here. Uh, another note that uh, everybody loves to talk about issues in the 5G chipset. Yeah. So, uh, in, in terms of NAS per protocol, uh, the, uh, the, the 5G Unisoc modem uh, is, is actually the same uh, as one we reviewed to, to, to today, and the presented vulnerability is also there. And uh, Unisoc uh, 
has patched uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the timber of their 4G and 5G uh, modems uh, a month ago, and, uh, but SRS, uh, SRS uh, open uh, source project uh, uh, did not, uh, has not yet patched a set of vulnerability which I provided six months ago. Uh, okay, thank you for your attention, and you can find many good security research on uh, our checkpoint research blog. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, if you have any questions right now or, or after that, I will go. for the talk. Um, you said that you only, <coughs> sorry? Oh. I don't hear. Okay, uh, thank you for the talk. My question is, you fast only the NIS layer? Did you also fast the others? I mean, they are reachable from a fake base station? No, okay, yeah. So, uh, actually, I want to do something very quick. Yeah, so, and uh, yes, I, I analyzed only uh, highest level of the, of the mobile protocol stack. This is uh, NAS layer and, and NAS messages, yeah. So. Did you go into any work um, about, like, documenting or understanding the security properties of the baseband OS itself, anything about the heap allocator or um, about the RTOS that runs on the device, or on the coprocessor baseband device? Uh, as I understand the question, uh, uh, did you, uh, uh, did I uh, document something? No, uh, no. It's, it's more <laughs> actually like, no, this. <laughs> it's more like you look into the, um, did you look into the implementation of of various memory like on the devices back then, uh, you just look to try and crash the. Uh, actually, I t I tried to think for a question. Actually, I of course I tried the, the few things that uh, I'll do as a researcher. I try to find the source code of any documentation, and uh, and uh, you know yes, uh, I have a, I have a, some old code of Qualcomm of Mediatek, and but uh, but uh, Unisoc is something new uh, for researchers, and no, I have nothing. So it's. Uh, <laughs> uh, I did it from the scratch. Yeah. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>